How's it going everybody? My name is John Hammond. It's been a little bit since I posted a video, so I wanted to get back into the swing of things. We're going to be doing some Try Hack Me. Let's do the Vulnerversity Room over on the website there. So I'll switch to my screen here, and we will go ahead over to the Hacktivities section, where we can look at all of the rooms that are available, and Vulnerversity is what we're going to end up looking for. So once this goes ahead and loads, take a little bit of time there. Okay, cool. Vulnerversity is here. Learn about active recon, web app attacks, and privilege escalation. So let's go ahead and hit join room, that green button there. And once that lets me in, we should be able to tackle this. Um, I do have my VPN con downloaded, so I'll go ahead and connect with that. That's just the John Hammond YouTube VPN key. Log in the password there. Now that that is connected, uh, let's spin that up with a new terminal and let's make a directory for Vulniversity. Good. I guess I added an I in that. Whatever. So we will need to deploy the machine and that will go ahead and take a little bit of time, but we'll have an IP address. So I want to jot that down here. I'm just going to say uh, in that, let's, let's make that the correct name just for the internet's sake. And let's make an IP address text file just so I can keep track of things. Uh, I ended up aliasing nano to vim. So that's just my <laughs> convenience as I needed. So that's deployed. Uh, let's go ahead and see if he's actually up. Let's ping that. Still taking a little bit of time, so we'll stand by. Um, but that task, just to deploy it, should be done nice and easily. And then we're going to want to head, want to go ahead and nmap the machine. So we'll use nmap. Um, do I have nmap installed? I should. And map. Okay, good. I'm working off of a Kali install right now, so theoretically everything should be working A-OK -okay for me. So we could use the nmap syntax that they recommend with nmap tac sv. Uh, typically just out of the norm, I end up using a tac sv and tac sc. And try hack me is really, really nice. They actually just specify, hey, here's a good little cheat sheet or some information on what some of the flags, the arguments or parameters actually do. So that tac sc that I normally do will also scan the default nmap scripts because the nmap scripting engine or NSE is fantastic. So SV will attempt to determine versions, and that's going to be super duper handy, especially if we're going to be trying to track down some vulnerabilities and exploits. So it looks like that ping response came back. Uh, let's make a directory nmap for some quick work here, and let's use nmap tac sc, because I like to use that. Tac sv to enumerate versions. I will tac on, so I can save it in that nmap directory. I'll just call it initial and the IP address. So now that that is started, we could go see what it's actually going to ask us to determine. Scan the box, how many ports are open? Okay, we'll find that out as soon as we get the nmap results back. What version of the squid proxy is running on the machine? Okay, we can assume squid will be in there. How many ports will nmap scan if the flag TACP up to 400 is used? Well, okay, so TACP up to a number will specify a port scan for all ports up to that. TACP TAC with nothing will go all the way up to port 65,000. 535 and um, TAC P TAC up to a certain number will go up to that number. So we can just specify that should be 400 as the total number of ports scanned. And once try hack me lets me know, yep, that's correct. Okay. If using the nmap flag TAC N, what will it not resolve? So going back, we'll let nmap finish over there, but let's check out the man page for nmap because we can see over here in their cheat sheet, they actually don't discuss the TAC N flag. I'll actually just search for that with a forward slash tac n. Forward slash lets me search in paginated output or less here. And that tac n will never do DNS resolution. Okay. So we could specify it will not resolve DNS as our answer here. Good. That should submit. And now we have our results back. So let's kill that window and let's go take a look at what we have here. So FTP is open. VSFTPD 3.0.3 SSH is open. Port 22, probably Ubuntu. Okay, looks like we have a lot of telltale signs for Ubuntu. NetBIOS, SMB 445, Squid Proxy here. Interesting. Oh, but we also have the version number that it was asking. The Apache server is running on quad three. So how many ports do we have total? One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Okay, so that's that first answer. How many ports are open? We have six. What is the version of the squid proxy? Let's grab that here. Three, five, 12. Slap that in. What is most likely the operating system that that machine is running? We saw a lot of telltale signs for Ubuntu, so let's give that a go. And what is the port that the web server is running on? So quad three, you can see, is running HTTP, and that's Apache. So we have a version number there if we wanted it, but quad three, go ahead and submit. It's important to ensure you're always doing your reconnaissance thoroughly before progressing. Knowing all open source, excuse me, services can also be points of exploitation is very important. Don't forget to scan for ports that are on a higher range. So always scan for ports even after a thousand. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that, leaving, leaving that running in the background. Um, I'll be aggressive with that. I'll use TAC A and let's call it uh, all ports and we'll specify that TAC P TAC. So we go all the way from zero to ports 65,535. There we go, we'll let that run. So we know that there is a web service or a web server running on port 3333 quad three. So we could go ahead and take a look at that. I will slap that IP address in, go take a look at this page. It says Vuln University. No nation can prosper in life without education. Cool, very cool. Okay, so now we can start to do our normal uh, enumeration reconnaissance on this website. You could use Nikto. We could do a little bit more Nmap stuff. We could do um, some other enumeration with Durbuster or GoBuster, and that's actually what they recommend. We're going to end up using GoBuster to go ahead and find other directories or other locations on this website. So we could download GoBuster. They give us a link here. I'm running in Kali. Uh, I did have to install it, I think, from my version. So GoBuster, I just needed to do a little sudo apt install GoBuster. And uh, now we'll end up using it with our dir as our use directory file brute forcing mode. And they recommend that here. And we can go find our word lists over in user share word lists. So we'll need that IP address. So let's use GoBuster, TACU, HTTP, that guy on port quad three, and we'll use a word list with the TACW argument. So I'm gonna end up grabbing one out of user share word lists, and I think it's DirBuster is what I like to use. And there is a directory list mm, 2.3, medium is kind of what I like to use. So um, TACU, shorthand flag U and TACU, what does that mean? What? What are you talking? Oh, 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 I forgot the word dir. I don't know why I do that constantly. Okay, so now he's rolling through it. We can see an images directory. We can go take a look at that while we're here. Looks like that has a lot of potential pictures in here. Nice, dude. That's awesome. That's what we all came to YouTube for. <laughs> uh, CSS, JS for JavaScript, cascading style sheets, so a little bit more static information. Looks like that is being displayed with directory indexing. So that's kind of neat. We might be able to track down some other potential files in there. If we wanted to, of course, we could run Nikto. Do I have that installed? I do. Yeah, let's run him. Let's run Nikto. Um, we're going to need that HTTP. P -P -P. Quad 333. Three, three. Good. He's rolling. But we also found some interesting thing here. Slash internal seems kind of new. So let's go check that out. Slash internal. Nice, and it looks like there is an upload functionality there. So that is what uh, TryHackMe expected us to find. We did want to find this slash internal page. We can go ahead and submit that. And good, that's correct. And we do want to end up saying, yes, we successfully ran GoBuster. So now that task three is done. Why isn't task two done yet? Oh, forgot to hit complete up there. Okay, good. Now let's go take a look at task four, compromising the web server. So now that you found a form to upload files, we can leverage this to upload and execute our payload that will lead to compromising the web server. Try to upload a few files to the server. What common extension seems to be blocked? Okay, uh, well, my knee-jerk reaction to this we can ignore you, Nikto, and we can probably stop GoBuster now that we found a location. My knee-jerk reaction to this is to try and upload a PHP reverse shell. So if you don't have that installed, uh, you can go take a look at PHP reverse shell. Um, GitHub is going to showcase one that comes out of PentestMonkey. And this one is pretty awesome because it's a very, very stable and solid PHP reverse shell. So I'll just grab this. Um, I'll save it in my opt directory because I'm probably going to end up wanting to use this more often. I don't think I actually have it in here just yet. So let's make a directory um, rev shell. I was going to call it exploit, but that's really not what it's doing. So let's go ahead and copy that opt php reverse shell into this directory. And let's modify this here because I need to know my current IP address 
for this interface inside the VPN. So I'm looking at that ton zero interface and that's uh, 10, 8, 26, 10. So we'll change that here, my IP address, and we'll use a new port. I'll use 9001 because it's over 9000. It's a shout out to you, Ipsec. <laughs> I love that joke. Okay, and now we could try to upload a few files to the server. What common extension seems to be blocked? Well, let's go ahead and start to listen on a port. So in case this executes, 9001, a little extra there. And let's move that PHP reverse shell to just something simple, revshell.php, so that's nice and easy for me to access. Let's go to CTF, try hack me. Volnversity, rev shell, rev shell. Upload that. It says extension not allowed. Okay, a little annoying, right? So what this is telling me is that, let's try that PHP, not allow that. TryHackMe suggests we could go ahead and kind of enumerate what things might be useful out of Burp Suite, go through a couple of extensions of P for PHP files and see one of them maybe will be allowed and one of them might not. So obviously we know .php won't work. We could try .php3, .php4, .php5, etc., etc. So uh, they're doing this with Burp Suite. I kind of want to change the game and I want to do this with Python because I think that might be a little bit of fun and we could do some cool learning in that. So let me go ahead and create a little ape script. Uh, I'll use user bin environment Python if I could type, and I'm gonna end up importing requests. Do I have requests, will that work? Yeah, okay, cool. So let's grab the URL here. Um, let's just change the IP address, make that its own actual variable. I'm gonna use some F strings just to be able to put that in place because uh, in case I needed to revert this machine or something. Um, I will be able to change that really easily in my script. I should be using arg parse and like make it a unique tool, but I'm not just yet. We could do that if we wanted to. So this is going to end up posting to just itself, uh, index.php with some files in there. Um, the type is file. That's the name of it. Name is file and ID is file. Okay. And then we just need to go ahead and submit all that. So let's try to use Python requests to upload a file. I just want to showcase the documentation here so you can see it really nice and easily. I'll go to their quick start, file, post a multi-part encoded file. So we have our URL, we just defined that, and they actually specify files as a dictionary with the file name that you wanna end up working with. So let's say um, our file name can equal rev shell, and then let's say extensions can be a good list of everything that they already suggested. Let's say .php. Let's say uh, PHP 3, PHP 5, PHP HTML. That's all that they suggested within uh, Try Hack Me, isn't there? PHP 4 is also in the mix. Whatever, let's just be nice. PHP 4, okay, cool. So what we'll do is we'll say files can equal file, because that is exactly uh, the name of the argument that the page is going to end up taking. Let's clear that, let's clear that. So post the URL with files equals files and we need to go ahead and open it in that binary mode. So let's try that. Um, that's all they're doing, yep. So let's open and let's say, um, let's do this over and over again. So let's do for file in extensions. Let's change that to ext. We'll do file name equals, and I'm gonna use OS so that way I can actually properly join these uh, segments of a file name. So I like to use os.path.join of file name and extension. So just for a sanity check, let's display that. Okay, so that's getting a little bit messy. File name equals that. Uh, let's just say file. There we go. And we're printing file name when we wanna be printing file. Okay, great. Uh, I do have a forward slash in there because it's using join as if they are directories. So maybe that's not what I ended up needing to do. Annoying. Let's just do um, file name plus extension. Sure, whatever. I guess we don't need OS for the time being, but we will end up needing to change that. So we could also specify headers explicitly. That's kind of neat. 
those are some other interesting things we could do with that file. But we are going to end up needing to rename this. So uh, because we have this, we can spe specify files can equal file open file rb. And let's do a requests.post to that URL with files equals files. So then that should return a response object for us. I'll just call that R so we can keep track of it. And we'll go ahead and see what it says. Blah, blah, blah. And it tried to do a few of those, but that's the only one that works. Extension not allowed. Okay, so uh, now we know that the .php one, because it's trying that first, was getting that extension not allowed. So we can say if extension not allowed in r.text, we can print, um, let's just say extension not allowed. We can say, and otherwise we can say, seems to be allowed, maybe. And let's go ahead and uh, rename that file to the original file. Let's just call it, um, Hmm, how do we want to keep track of the previous file name? This is peculiar. And we could just do a simple um, shutil, I think, to remove a file or Python rename. Rename a file. Oh, rename will just straight up do it. os.rename. Is that a thing I can do? os.rename. Let's just say old file name. Mm. Original file name equals revshell.php. Let's just say new file name equals, and let's also set that old file name equal to that old file name. Yeah, we don't even need original file name then. That variable isn't necessary for it because we're just going to end up updating the old file name after each new one. So rename old file name to new file name. And then after we've gone ahead and tested something, let's rename or let's reset the old file name to be the new file name. So it's changing it automatically over and over again. Let's go. File is not defined. Yep, because now we are new file name. We don't need to print that out anymore. PHP is not allowed. PHP is not allowed. PHP is not allowed. PHP is not allowed. But PHTML seems to be allowed. Cool. So our script simply just determines it and brute forces some extra files in there without using Burp Suite, which is kind of cool. Maybe that showcased a little bit more logic and some quick, dirty development in Python. Wanted to uh, bring that to you guys in case you had any interest. Simple script, simple loop. Just looping through those and keeping track of the old file name, renaming it as we're working through. So what we've done now is we have actually uploaded this something as a revshell.phtml. So we can say, okay, yep, we've gone to complete it. We're not going to use Durbuster or Burp Suite because I just don't particularly care. But PHTML might end up working for us. Let's go verify manually. PHP rev shell, success. Okay, good enough. We know that that one does work. So we've downloaded the PHP reverse shell. We've already done all that. Now we've set up the listener and we've gone to it. We've accessed it. So it is in eternal upload. I will clean this up a little bit and start the listener one more time. Um, so now back over on the upload page, if I check out uploads, there is a revshell.phtml there. So let's go ahead and activate that. Okay, great. And now I can see that shell came back to me. Awesome. So um, this is kind of an unstable shell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, Python taxi import PTY, PTY.spawn bin bash technique. Now that will get me a shell and I'll control Z to foreground that and I'll use STTY raw minus echo. And now I won't be able to type anymore, but I will specify FG, whack enter a little bit and then export term equals X term. So now I can control L and tab complete and use my left and right arrow keys, et cetera, et cetera. So now that we have a shell on the box, 
Let's see what's next. Yep, we've gone ahead and got our connection. What user is running the web server? Okay, so let's just run who am I? Dub 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 data. Is that what it's particularly asking for? That's just running who I am. That's not the right number of asterisks, so that must not be right. Um, let's go find out who the users are on this machine. I see a bill user, okay. And his home directory is in slash bill. So let's head over there. Home bill. And he has a user.txt file. If I check out the running processes, what do we have here? So Apache. Blah, blah, blah. Bill is not running anything. Root is another option. And root is actually running... Again, seemingly no Apache. That's all dub 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 data, as it should be. Um, maybe we'll just specify Bill because that's the user that owns that machine. Okay. Click submit. Okay. <laughs> Good. There we go. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Notifications. I get it now. What is the user flag? Well, we are in his home directory, so let's check out user.txt, and we have this little hash here. So. Let's slap that in there, and that is the user flag. Awesome. Okay, so now that task is done. Now we're on to the last one here, privilege escalation. Okay, what do we have? Now that you compromise this machine, we're going to escalate your privileges and become the super user root. In Linux, SUID binaries, or set owner user ID upon executing, is a special type of file permission given to a file. It gives temporary permission to the user who runs the programmer file with the permission of the file owner rather than the user who runs it. For example, the binary to change your password has a set UID bit on it, user bin password. And this is to change your password, it'll need to change the rights to actually access the shadowers file that you do not have access to, but root does. So it has the ability to do that. So you can find it with the S notification on the ls tac l. Uh, so if I were to use ls tac l on that user bin password, it is RWS, and you can see that S specifies, okay, this is a set UID binary. On the system, search for all SUID files. What file stands out? Okay, so we could do this with a little Linux uh, find set UID. We could just kind of Google this, and they'll, this is a pretty well-known thing. Find in a current directory user root perm. Uh, that perm 4000 is really the best thing to end up using because that'll specify those files that are set to 4000. Uh, so I'll do that. I'll do find in the root directory with perm tag 4000. And I'm going to actually redirect the standard error to this because there are going to be a lot of things that I can't actually access into dev null. So it's going to take a little bit to search for this. Okay, scrolling through a few more of these. Bin SU, NCFS, mount, ping 6, that's kind of normally, typically. System CTL, that's peculiar. It's kind of odd. Oh. Okay, I don't know what that did or why that did that. F user mount. Okay, so it looks like we have a lot of options. Um, bin system CTL, I'm kind of curious about because I don't, I don't think that's often something that is set UID. Let me try and run this on my machine and let's find out. So find uh, root... Uh, we'll do that same perm 4,000, 40,000, for, for that one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we'll redirect the standard output to nowhere. Um, standard error, sorry. So some of these might have uh, set UID binaries in here. Okay, so no, system CTL is not normal. And that's I just wanted to use my machine as kind of a baseline because maybe uh, system CTL, I have it installed. It's a thing. Okay. Maybe system CTL is our uh, candidate for a potential privisc. Let me go scroll back down here. So let's try him. This file stands out. Bin system CTL is not normally one that is a set UID binary. So now we've got it through this far. Uh, are you able to exploit the system for the escalate your privileges? Well, if bin system CTL is a set UID binary, we might be able to use that for privilege escalation. We can go check out GTFO bins because this is a fantastic resource for a potential privilege escalations for some binaries that might happen to be on a system. You can do things like get a shell, run a command, get a reverse shell, read files, download files, etc., etc. So let's go take a look at system CTL. And because it's running with SUID or set UID, if it runs with the SUID bit and it can probably be exploited to access the file system, escalate or maintain access with escalated privileges. If it's used to run SH, you can emit it with TAC P, 
but they give us some code here, an example that creates a local SUID copy of the binary and runs it to maintain escalated privileges. To exploit an existing SUID binary, skip the first command and run the program using its original path. Okay. Okay, so yeah, because it's existing, it, because it already has set UID bit, we can just copy all of this. So it'll create a temporary service file where it will execute some commands. So bin sh, taxi, hmod, it. So it'll just execute there. We could do this. We could control this. Maybe it'll give us a reverse shell or make... Um, this is a good technique that I like to use where I like to uh, change bash to be a set UID binary. So I could actually use bash tack P and then escalate my privileges to become root temporarily. Like if I check who I am right now, I'm just dub 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 data. I don't have any kind of effective user rights. But if I were to modify this, here's a uh, quick paste in here. Yep, I copied everything that we needed to. Oh, let's actually grab that uh, make service syntax. And let's execute... Um, chmod plus s on bin bash. So if I don't run this, let's check out the writes on bin bash. Right now it is only executable. Uh, there's no set UID binary bit. So I, if I were to try and run bin bash tack p, which will allow me to keep permissions and privileges, I'm still dub 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 data. That doesn't, that hasn't changed anything for me. So let's try and use this here. And we don't need to use systemctl. We could specify that as bin system ctl that's not going to use the period as the current directory like a relative location i want to actually use the uh, full one it's the full path so now that bash will be executed this command will be ran as root it'll make bin bash a set uid binary so when i run bash tack p i can effectively become root so let's try that slap this in ran it created the sim link great and since it has ran with that enable tack tack now now let's check out the writes on that bin bash great now you can see that s here just as we discussed and it has a set uid binary bit so i could simply run bash tack p and now i'm root check that out it still thinks I'm dub 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 data, dub 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 data, but my effective user ID using that tag P permission, those privileges that I can retain, I am in fact root. So now I can go check out the root directory and I could grab that root flag because I have permissions to access this because I am running effectively as root with bash tag P. All because we were able to make that bin bash some set UID binary that I could run abusing this system CTL that we were able to execute because that was a set UID binary. So that's kind of cool. Let's go collect some points here and finish this up. Let's go back to our shell. Let's cut out that root.txt file and let's go slap that guy in so we can finish this room. All right, congratulations. You completed the room. That was Vulnversity from try hack me uh i hope that was kind of cool i hope that was kind of fun um i just wanted to showcase some other techniques i think using python to roll through that kind of hammering the service might be kind of cool allows you to have a little bit more flexibility on what it really does and how much more you want to add for some other file extensions uh, i also hope you like that bin bash the set uid technique uh, i like to use that because if you already have access to the machine and you can execute commands just make bash tag p actually work so you can escalate that's a quick and easy privesc. You don't need to like fumble around getting a reverse shell, maybe in a small uh, attack vector like we had, because we could only run seemingly one line, or I guess we could modify that service to do whatever we wanted to. But I think that's quick and easy. So, hey, that's that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press that like button. If you didn't, press the dislike button twice so I know how much you hated it. I don't know. Um... <laughs> Love to see if you could leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, do all those things. The YouTube algorithm, love to see you on Patreon, PayPal, Discord. There's a link in the description of the server. Tons of cool people in there, a lot smarter than me. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and all those other social media things. Okay, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.